These oranges are just for the picture. <laughs> yes. Maybe we juggle some of them. One more time. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of We Don't Know What, because we haven't still named it. But um, I had a good talk with Ella last time, talking about one of my students, and we thought, let's do it again. I am Sarvi. And you probably know me with ELT with Sarvi. I'm an English teacher. And this is Anna, my friend. And uh, he's a podcaster. You probably know him with that time stories. I uh, create stories for my daughter. She's five and a half. Uh, I started with uh, stories in Lebanese Arabic. And recently I've been exploring stories in English with some Lebanese words. What we will have more of from Ala in these series that we will name soon, I promise, <laughs> is his uh, dad perspective. You know, we see a lot of teachers sitting together. I already told you talking about their students and like they can only look at things from the perspective of a teacher, an educator. But um, what I'm trying to do here is to have the perspective of a real parent. Today, we're talking about um, the testing system of schools. Uh, one of my biggest concerns, um, actually, I was talking to Allah on the way and I was telling him today that uh, it really sucks. I'm sorry to say that, but like the way we care about uh, students' scores, uh, either as a teacher, as a school administrator, I'm sorry to say that, but as a parent, yes, Mira is still not there. She's not that age. But can you promise that when she uh, becomes seven or eight, you will not care about that score? Uh, I, I think I would, yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay, he's confident that he's not going to be concerned and like obsessed with that score. But we know a lot of different parents, different um, students because of their parents, because of the school's administrators and teachers that uh, are obsessed with that score um, in a way that they somehow forget that they are there for the knowledge. So what do you think, Ella? At this point, Mira is too young uh, to be judged by uh, grades. I know she's brilliant. I know... Um, she loves uh, to learn, to attend classes, to learn new things. Um, as a as a student, when I was younger, I I used to hate the classes that I wouldn't score much. Like, for instance, I used to hate history because my like I like I, it. It is so hard for me to memorize. And even though later on I've realized that I love history, I love the, the content, like learning about the past, like the, the like I'm very curious to know how things went in the past. Um, but when it comes to like, uh, okay, later on you're asking me about these things and you're grading me for these things, I would like fail at it. And consequently, I used to hate history. Uh, I don't know if I gave the example once I had like a really good history teacher uh, like like at my last year in school and he he didn't use a textbook and he used to give the 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 class in, and as if it's a play uh, he, he used to act the characters like General de Gaulle I don't know which part of history do you know like um uh, uh, when these generals in the history they're meeting up, he embodies them and he would tell the story from their perspective. And he just added interest to it. And he didn't focus much on, on you know, like certain ways of answering. Like he focused more on the content and I love that. And I've realized that I really like history. So you think that if... Uh, teachers could somehow make you focus more on the content of the lesson then, and, and less on the score in the end, then you can actually like that lesson, even if it is not of your general interest. So I, I, I think there's a fine line there that uh, too, because it's not like, personally, I liked history, but I'm sure there are kids or students, people who don't like history or don't like certain material. Uh, 
I, I was telling you about this earlier that we come in different shapes and different ways and different personalities and different interests. So uh, in, in, in this particular example, I did like history, but I was afraid of the grades and the grades affected my perception of the material. Uh, but maybe uh, others won't like history at all, no matter what. Uh, and this is how which like when you're grading, and I think you'll go deeper into that, when you're grading students uh, in, in this, within a certain system, you're disregarding their own personality. Like I used to be good at math, but if you're going to uh, uh, look at my grades, my general grades, my grades would be a bit lower or much lower because my the my grades in other material would be much worse. And actually, towards the end of my school years, that affected my general grades because I understood that I'm good at math and at physics, so I spent more energy into the other material. But I ended up losing grades on the other side. So I ended up having the same average, but like in the process, I lost what I would have gained if I focused on what I really liked. I know, I know what so, you yeah. So I cannot really talk about other subjects right now, Ala, but I can talk about my own subject, which mm. is English. Uh, and uh, I already gave you this example and I want to give it to everyone else about, I mean, bear with me, I'm going to tell you that story about the time that I, I mean, the first time that I got my period and I know it might not sound relevant, but uh, two minutes later, it might. It, it, it <laughs> might really. And it will really, it will be relevant. Like the first time that I got my uh, period, I remember that a school day. It was a very active, dynamic day. So I didn't even get to sit once. And like we also received the result of one of the exams, which was the math exam. And I got a 17 out of 20. Yeah, in our education system, it's not like A, B, C, D. It was like uh, numbers and you received them out of 20, not 100. So I got 17 out of 20, which was above average. It was fine. But I was really, really stressed because my mom usually didn't like it. And she used, I mean, she had her own way of showing that she didn't approve of that score. Like sometimes she wouldn't talk to me or she would give me that look of hers. I mean, it was not always like, uh, why did you get that score? No, you just feel it. You just feel that I, she, that she's disappointed, and you've disappointed her. I could totally feel it in her eyes, in her reactions, even in the way that she would put like food in front of me, whether she was satisfied or not. So keep this in mind because we will get back to this. This is very important. So I remember I got my period for the first time, and yes, I had a seventeen out of twenty as well in math, and the school day finished. And um, magically speaking, because it was a very dynamic day and I was walking around, running around all day, steps going up and down, there was no staying, so nobody figured out or everybody would understand. Not that it's something unnatural, um, but it can make a student panic, like having it happen the first time and everybody noticing that stain on the uniform or on their dress and everything. Did you know about it before or it was like you were discovering? No, it was like my, my mom had already talked about it with me. So you were, you know, it wasn't like, oh, okay, what's happening? You, no, and you no. understood. I kind of knew these things. Yeah. Like my mom used to talk about these things freely, thank God. Good. And I was prepared. But then I remember that uh, I got out of school, I was really stressed and because of those hormones and everything, I was not familiar with them because I had never experienced them. And my mom hadn't really prepared me for the emotional, you know, changes that I was going to experience uh, for whatever reason. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't that important for her at that time. She just wanted to prepare me for what was about to come. And uh, anyways, I went out of school, I looked at her and I was like, should I tell her? Um, should I tell her the, what I got? And I had all of these pains all over my body, but I couldn't even think about them, you know? Like, I was super stressed because of that score. So I finally, like, told her that I had 17 out of 20 in math and she gave me one of those looks. 
I'm sure you can imagine. And I was so, so even more stressed at that point. Anyways, we got, we got home and I went to the toilet right away because I knew that something was happening. I just didn't know what. And finally, I figured out what had happened. I got out. I told her. And all of a sudden, she was so happy. She gave me like a slap. It's a tradition back at home in Iran, like a slow one. Oh, our girl is a real girl. This was the sentence I heard. Math was completely forgotten. And uh, let's say that the first uh, message that gave me that happiness was that, okay, uh, if you make a mistake, but then you feel some sort of pain, it's all right. Um, if, I mean, it, it, it's, it's all right to make a mistake, but be in pain, be sick, be on your period and all. So this was the first message that reaction gave me. And second of all, like nobody... Uh, nobody teaches you at the school these things uh, to to question things whether okay that a score is important or not you know why are you in the first place so stressed about it that that's why that right now at school I have got a students coming to me I say okay you don't have homework why uh, they are not asking about the why of that homework and they are not giving me a proper answer for why they haven't done it. Like they come to me and they are like, I didn't do it because uh, I was sick. I was on my period and I'm thinking I'm going back to that experience. And I'm like, who gave them this message that if you didn't do something well, okay, uh, don't ask why you are doing that in the first place and give an excuse. If the excuse is pain, then you are excused. Um, the, the way I, I saw your story, uh, a bit different, not very different, but like you were experiencing something new and then instead of being aware of your body, of that experience of adapting to it, of, uh, uh dealing with it, you were taken by uh, your score. You're taken by something that in theory shouldn't be a big deal. Uh, at least today's survey today thinks it's not a big deal. And I agree with you, it's not a big deal. Um, so the, yeah, like, and uh, your mom, because she's excited because of this, the, 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 the topic itself, or because of this uh, traditionally like crossed um, uh, certain stage in your life, she was excited about it and she forgot uh, the grade. Uh, or let's say you were sick and uh, like um, some sickness and uh, she noticed that and then she forgot the grade. But it shouldn't be like that. The, the grade should... I'll give another counter example. When I was younger, um, I didn't have parents who would push me for, you know, good grades and stuff. Maybe they did at some point, or maybe they just showed excitement when I was doing great. And that built like some sort of, you know, I want more better grades always so that I can compete with that. I remember I used to compete with my other uh, classmates, my friends, uh, until one day they just left, went to another school. And I was literally the only person who was that interested in the material. And the others weren't doing that great with grades, if we're talking about grades. But because it's there's the social pressure, so that's a different kind of social pressure. You want to fit in, you want and getting good grades means you're like this nerd or this, you know. So you, to fit in, it becomes a, like the, the other way around. So you start like uh, putting less effort and all of that. When in fact, neither they should feel uh, left out or should feel like less because they're not getting good grades. Neither I should feel that I should pay more energy to get better grades or less energy to get less grades so that I am... The, the focus, again, back to originally what we were talking about, the focus should be on the material itself. Um, and I, I, I know that uh, later on in my life, uh, when uh, I moved to another school, um, there were 
then in any class, there are students who are better with grades and students who are uh, less good with grades. Um, but towards the end of the, like towards like before getting to college, many of them were like, ah, oh, I want better grades for the college or whatever. And then we collaborated together to, uh, to make like, to help each other to get, uh, to get the material, uh, properly or like to consume the material properly and with the right motive. And with uh, the right energy uh, and sometimes the right teachers, because we had teachers also helping us. We were doing, we were being teachers too, to some students and like, you know, exchanging knowledge and exchanging experience or we actually uh, had the, maybe the first, like one of the few classes that got really high grades in the official exams at the end. Um, and and the focus there, yes, there, the focus was again the grades, but the approach was not like, ah, oh, okay, why aren't you getting grades? It was a punishment because you didn't get grade. It was more of, okay, how can we uh, learn together? And and I remember there was a positive input from certain teachers, like even some students didn't weren't getting good grades in math, for instance. But some teachers did notice that these students were brilliant. Like they, they, they have the knowledge, they have the capacity to consume math. Again, I'm not saying uh, some students or some people are good with in math, some are, are good in, in music, some are good in uh, creative writing, etc. So, but like the teachers were noticing that uh, the skills, the skill set of uh, these students and they were telling them, even though they didn't have the grades to back it up, they were telling them like, ah, oh, I noticed that you're like, you, yeah, you can do better. I know that you can do better. How can we help you get better? That push, that, um, what do we call it? Like, you know, like that in the back. Inspiration. Like kind of inspiration. Like or encouragement. Encouragement um, helped them to uh, dig deeper into their potential and actually uh, do great. And uh, many of them, if not all, yani, they're now they're doing really good, really well. So you, um, I mean, back to what I said mm. about uh, like my mom's reaction, maybe because you yourself never experienced that kind of reaction. Okay. At some point in your life, you figured that, oh, we can actually look at grades, not as great as another mountain that they need to like uh, climb. Mm. And like, like we need the, up. like we need the grades for university. So yeah, this is why I need better grades, but it wasn't, to me, it wasn't a pressure. I, I'm sure that to others, it was a pressure. But when I was referring back to your mom and your story with your mom, I, I wanted to emphasize on the fact that because of the pressure of the grades, you forget about, you forgot about yourself. Completely. Like you, you, you're experiencing something very new at, in your life and you're, uh, you're not allowed, you're not given the chance to live that experience, to notice what's happening, to adapt to what's happening. You were, uh, being preoccupied by a, a detail that it shouldn't matter. And like the reaction can form a lot of different understanding, uh, different understandings in people. You see, like the reaction I received was so unnatural, you know, like, uh, okay, you got your period. First of all, you got a bad score, frowning, okay, not talking to you. You're not a good girl. And then like everything changed. Okay, you're experiencing pain. Oh, nice. So it was so unnatural, you know, like what I really would love to talk about right now is that those reactions that we give to our students can make them one day collaborate together for a good grade and seeing it as a form of gain fun. I mean, from what you were talking about, I was getting the energy of it's just another challenge, like a basketball game, guys. Mm. Let's get together and do it. And then on the other hand, we can have another kid like reacting 
not eating anything a day before exam or feeling so stressed that they even don't want to go to school on the I mean, we uh, recently have a lot of absentees when exam is coming up. And when I ask them, like, why weren't you there that day? They're like, uh, teacher, I was sick. I was really, really sick. And like, they might actually be sick. You know, like when you when you check it out, you figure out that, yes, that kid was really sick. But like, was it something serious? What happened the day after that? And like a day after that, everything is okay. Or was it because of the stress? Like, I remember I, I, I got sick because of stress. I didn't know that it was stress until I went to the hospital and like, they were like, oh. And I didn't even take it seriously until later in my life. Like, I didn't, I, I thought it was like a one-off thing. And apparently it's something that did come back again, but I was mature enough to notice it and to uh, do something about it. And right now, can I ask something? Yeah. Like, what do you think about your own reactions with Mira right now? Like, now that I told you this story, what do you think? Do you think that, I'm sorry to interrupt you, like, do you think that those reactions are sincere and genuine? Well, I mean, based on what she's going through and what she's experiencing, because I'm sure that my mom at that point, let's not judge her. I mean, based on her own traditions, her own background, the reaction was completely natural to her. But like my take from it was a totally different thing. I wanted to talk about your take first. Um, uh, I, I, I noticed that you used uh, two negative things or like the body pain from your period uh, and the... Uh, like the real, the bad grade, which isn't bad, 17 over 20, this is really good. Uh, the bad grade in math. And uh, you've um, compared your mom's reaction to them. And it's interesting to hear that because you, you put them together. Like you were, I, I'm th I think you were more in shock to see your mom reacting to a bad grade and then reacting to pain in a to completely opposite thing. And it was like, this is why I think it's imprinted. Like it was hard for me when you were telling me the story to see like the, 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 the exact uh, relationship beyond the fact that there is a connection at that part with that particular story to your grades and that memory and etc. But I think it's more of how you, as a kid, probably were trying to understand why two negative things, or at least in your perception, there were two negative things, the bad grade and the pain, uh, where uh, didn't get uh, completely opposite reactions from your mom. So yeah, I this is how I saw the connection with you bringing up that memory mm -hmm. or one uh, type of connections. I just want to check if the camera is... Oh, I'm one of them. I have no idea, is it? Because... It's not. It's not. Goodness. I knew it from where has it stopped. Check it out. How oh, can we check out? So you asked me about my reaction to Mira. And uh, recently we've started uh, homeschooling with Mira. Uh, and she's attending classes online. And I've been noticing that she's not always focused. And when we're... When she's attending her class, she's having like food and like a paper, a piece of paper. Sometimes she's drawing. And I was a bit um, taken aback with that. Like she needs to be focusing. Like we were paying a lot for those classes. That's one thing. Another thing is she really, really learning. And uh, she is. She's not interested in all classes and she doesn't take in everything. And we're trying with different classes, sometimes the same material, but different teachers, different kinds of classes, different ways of approaching it. Even I am giving her uh, uh, an Arabic class and uh, depending on her mood and depending on how she's reacting to uh, the certain material, I adapt and I change the method, the way I'm teaching her or what I'm teaching her at the time. But on my way here, I was reflecting on that part. Because as a kid, I used to do something similar to Mira. But then with Mira, I was like getting worried. But as a kid, I used to, for instance, math, it's a material that I like. I used to, to have my, my math 
book in front of me, my workbook, I'm solving math equations, whatever. And I have in the background TV, sometimes cartoons, sometimes football, whatever. And I would be eating snacks and having like lunch or dinner. Or, and I'm having all of that at the same time. And it's still, um, if we're going back to grades, I was getting good grades. So she, I, I was looking at Mira's way of studying in a, in a scared way, but she, she's studying the same way I used to. And it worked for me. And apparently it's working for her. And whenever we're noticing that a certain material, again, she's not interested in, even when like for, for instance, dancing, she loves dancing, but she took one class that she wasn't really interacting. She didn't vibe with the teacher. We just changed the, the, the class. We went for something else and, and she did well. So you're making, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but you're making your own, let's say school for Mira, which is so cool. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's mostly her mom. Uh, she's doing the, the programming. She's finding the classes. I, in my case, I'm, I, I help her with all, one day a week. Uh, and I give her two classes a week, Arabic classes, and I'm adapting personally, I'm adapting just within that particular class. I love teaching, but I've never grown to be a professional or full-time teacher. I used to teach friends. I used to teach, uh, uh in, uh, summer, cl summer classes for my school when I was a student and I did some tutoring, uh, later on, but I was never a teacher, but I love it. And can I, can I ask, like, how do you, um, evaluate whether Mira is learning, like her learning process right now, because we're speaking about scoring. So mm. I, it's really interesting for me. So it's a bit different because, uh, as a teacher, you're only seeing uh, your students within the environment in the classroom, one particular class, which is the English class. In my case, I'm seeing Mira throughout the day. There is uh, the interactions that I have with her, the interactions that other family members or her mom is having with her, and we communicate about that. So we look at it from a bigger picture. We see how she's interacting, how she's, for instance, um, she's not particularly taking English class, but she's been taking classes in English. And we've noticed that her language is getting much better and she's being more expressive in English. She used to express herself more in Lebanese Arabic, but recently she's been able to express herself in English properly. And uh, so these are little things that you can only notice when you're spending enough time with the kid. So I don't know how this system could be adapted to schools because it's much harder. You're only giving, maybe as a kindergarten teacher, you're spending more time with the students and I think in kindergarten, they do have like systems are a bit, they, they judge many, many schools do that. Not all schools, maybe they judge based on the skills that you acquire rather than, uh, grading those skills. Uh, yeah, it's much harder, um, when it comes to schools, I don't know if there are existing school, uh, school systems that allow this kind of uh, evaluation. Yeah, you, you have you have created your own system. Yeah, but it works within like a closed environment, which is me, Mira, her mom, family, extended family. Of course, it's actually very interesting what you just talked about, which I think needs more time for us to talk about. So maybe in another video, like tell us if you want to know more about Mira's experience being <laughs> homeschooled, because I mean, it's really interesting. At least for me, like I, I, I would love to know, like, until which age do you think it's possible? How is it working for you, Rahim? No, like I, I was more into it as a later thing, you know, because we, we know a lot about uh, these um, creatives or, or entrepreneurs who left school and they did well in, in, in life. And I think it makes sense when they're old enough to have a certain but it's scary when it's that young, like she, like we are, maybe there are material that we think she doesn't like right now, but maybe she does, but she's, she hadn't been given the chance, the right chance with the right person, with the right teacher, with the right tutor, etc. So 
I, can, I don't know if I can answer those questions. It's still uh, ongoing. She's five and a half. <laughs> so it's not like, oh, now she's 20 or she started her startup and I can reflect on those 20 <laughs> years. It's still like something that's happening as we go and we're trying to adapt to what's happening. And I'm trying to push back because it's mostly her mom's pushing. Uh, and uh, and despite that, schools and the school systems, I understand how flawed they are. To me, it's like the familiar, and um, and they worked fine with me. I'm, I'm like I'm okay. So this is why it's always like a you're nervous, right? Yeah. <laughs> but it's an experience, and I'm sure there are a lot of people that would love to know about that experience because a lot of people might actually go through the same thing. I mean, what we're talking about, yes, school has worked out for us, but who says that another approach cannot be as effective? Mm. So um, if you really want us to record another video on this, we will. But right now, I think... We talked about everything about scoring, like the scoring system that we have at school, what you're doing with Mira. We would really love to know your take from um, our discussion, okay, about what you think about scoring, how much you are actually um, putting tension on the kids, if you're a parent, if you're a teacher, um, like anybody, I mean, even if you are like the sibling of another student, you might have an experience with the scoring system and how much it is putting pressure on um, the kids, like even teenagers these days. So let us know and uh, we'll record another video soon, right? I hope so. And I hope this is recording. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this time, fingers crossed. So we will see you in another video. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and also... Uh, that Time Stories. Yeah, That Time Stories, both the YouTube channel and also he got a great podcast. So um, yeah, please subscribe and we will see you in another video. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>